Well, the day has, uh, the day has finally come. I now have 50,000 subscribers. That is, man, that's a lot. <laughs> that's like, that's like a small city of people that tune in to watch my shit and listen to what I have to say for some reason. But, you know, I honestly just want to take a minute to thank all you guys because I never would have expected this to happen, uh, at least not more than a couple of months ago, because I think in the past few months it really has settled in that, yeah, I have a big following and this is going to continue to grow for the foreseeable future. So I just really want to thank all you guys, because without you I'd have to go back to having a real job, and uh, I hate that. So, yeah, just thanks a lot for listening to what I have to say. And so to celebrate, I am doing a Q&A. So... <laughs> Uh, I think you should understand how these work by now. I just asked people to send in questions, and they did, and now I'm going to answer them. So, let's get started. And just so you know, some of these questions were some that sort of blended into one another, so I just combined them, or they were similar to one another, so I combined them. And obviously I didn't have time to get to every single one of them, so I just chose the ones that I thought were best. Anyways, a whole lot of people wanted to know, what are your political beliefs? Uh, I'm an anarchist, which... I know that might sound kind of weird, but that is a, well, that's just what I think, uh, aka libertarian socialism, that's also a thing. Basically, I just want to get rid of the states, the nation state, get rid of all that shit, but also get rid of capitalism, and explaining it beyond that would take a very long time. I'd encourage you to all look it up on your own, because even if you disagree, you should at least know what it is, I think. What's a trope you really like, but most people don't? What's a trope you like, despite it being problematic? Uh, a trope that I really like that a lot of people seem to not be a big fan of is just low magic fantasy. Like, other than A Song of Ice and Fire, I can't think of very many fantasy series out there that have had magic just not take up a big role in the story. And, I don't know, I just find it really fascinating every time I've read about it, so I really like that, and... I don't know if other people don't like it, or other people don't hate it, but it's not a very popular thing, so I just like that. And as for a trope I like, despite it being kind of problematic, is uh, races that have different abilities or traits. Like, you see this a lot in fantasy, but you occasionally will get it in sci-fi as well, just races that have specific abilities. You know, some of them are smarter than others, they have their personalities kind of preset just based on their genetics. That's an un that has some unfortunate implications for the real world, but it's still really cool, especially in RPGs and stuff, because then you have actual reason to choose different races when you play. What was the most painful single line you've ever read? Uh, so that one was in Elixir, and you can actually see in my review of it, I bring up this line, and it is when Clalys's friend is talking to her, and she's saying, like, hey, uh, this other dude, whose name escapes me, is in love with you, and she's, and Clalys is like, hey, he's like my brother, that'd be weird. And so her friend says, hey, I read Flowers in the Attic, it was kind of hot. And that just... God, that should not exist. It should not. What is the best YA novel slash series that you have read? Uh, The Demonata, that's actually just my favorite series in general. It's The Demonata by Darren Shan, who also wrote uh, the Cirque de Freak books, if you didn't know that. And they are, uh, they're kind of weird, and it's difficult to describe exactly why I love them so much. But the short version is just that they are, they start off as kind of a standard kid discovers hidden magical world story, and then it just gets really, really dark and fucked up from there. What is the first story that you wrote? Uh, when I was around eight or nine, I wrote something which, looking back, is definitely fan fiction. It was just a self-insert Pokemon thing about me being a Pokemon trainer, and it's lost to time by now, but, you know, I... I had it then, and it's no longer around, so the... But yeah, that's the first thing I ever wrote. The first, like, serious, actual story I wrote all the way through and finished uh, was actually on my Fiction Press account, and that one is also a really shitty self-insert, but that one's about a demon who just kills dudes. It's, it's really edgy and stupid, but, you know, it's out there. What are your thoughts on using audiobooks rather than reading the book? 
You know, I've never uh, really used audiobooks before, and I keep meaning to try it out. J just one of these days, probably sometime in the near future, I'm gonna try it just to see if I like it or not. Uh, but I just, at the moment, I can't, uh, I can't say anything about it because I've never done it. Why is your fashion sense so awful? Suck my dick. What's one thing you think would improve most fantasy stories? Man, there are a lot of things out there that I think could be used to improve fantasy stories, but the one biggest thing that would make stories at least a little bit more original would be to just have less world-saving in there. Because think about it, pretty much all of them, whether I like them or not, they always, always, always involve saving the world. And this is, this goes across genres as well, but like, if they just had smaller scale stories, which didn't affect everything out there, and were just focused on like, okay, maybe one city or one small group of people, that would be a lot more interesting. At the very least, it would be more original, and it would be less obvious where things are going to turn out. What genres of music do you like? Do you have a favorite band or composer? I mean, I listen to a lot of different types of music, like a lot of different disparate types of music too, like I will list basically everything except country music I'll listen to at some point, and I don't really have a favorite band or composer, I just, I don't know, the past year I've been listening to a lot of metal music, so I guess we'll throw that in there. What do the symbols on your forearm tattoo represent? You know, I realized a little while ago that even though I've shown this on camera before, I've never actually said what it, uh, well, what it says. And uh, I'll put up a picture here. Woo. Uh, it says, the most important step a person can take is always the next one. And that's a quote from The Way of Kings, which, you know, Stormlight Archive, I've already read that, talks about how much I love those books. And yeah, that quote just really resonated with me. It really, well, it's motivational, it's inspiring. So I figured, yeah, let's pay some money, get it permanently etched into my skin. Since you have dipped your toes here and there, will you make more overtly political content in the future? You know, yes, I probably will, but I'll probably be doing it infrequently. Because the thing is, the past couple of months I've been doing it, like, much more than I initially wanted to. Um, and it's not that I dislike doing it or anything, it's just that if you do it too much, then that becomes, like, your entire brand, and that's just what you're known for, and that's what people expect from you, and honestly, you get attacked a lot more online for it, which it's just, it's just kind of exhausting. So, while I don't mind doing it, I have been doing it, like, once a month since around November, and yeah, I'll probably just be cutting back a little bit. Do you watch other booktubers review books? Sometimes, but not all that often, just because Booktube is like very focused on YA stuff, and while I don't hate YA, I have been a little harsh on it in the past, um, but I don't read it all that often anymore, uh, especially not new releases, and so I just, I, I just don't watch it all that much, um, but if I happen upon seeing like, hey, a review of this book and I'm kind of interested in it, or it's from a genre that I'm interested in or something that I want to get into, then I'll check that out. And obviously if it's the really long uh, ranty ones, kind of like what I do, like the is half an hour or an hour long, I like watching those even if I'm not at all interested in the book just because it's funny to watch people lose their minds about stuff. What's your job now? What job do you want? What job did you want as a little kid? My job now is this. I talk to a camera and say things to people and for whatever reason they listen to me, so all right. Uh, and what job do I want, and what job do I want as a little kid? Those are the same answer. I just want to be a writer. You know, I know it's probably not uncommon or all that surprising given my interests and what I talk about and stuff, but yeah, that's just what I want to do. That's the only thing I've ever had a lot of passion for, especially when I was younger. And I know it's not uh, all that likely, so I do have, like, you know, other career plans in minds that I can work on, uh, either before I do that or if I never wind up making that. Mm, excuse me. But yeah, that is, that is my dream job. Are you writing a book or planning to? If so, can you tell us anything about it? So yes, I do write uh, fairly frequently, um, but I don't really talk about it in public because one, that feels like it's just attention-seeking on one hand, and two, it just kinda... It, 
I've noticed that sometimes when people talk about, hey, I'm working on this and here's all the details about it, then that makes them feel as accomplished as if they actually did it and then they can't find the motivation to keep doing it, so I try to avoid talking about my works in progress. Uh, and at the same time, while yes, I have written like full-length novels before and finished them, I it's been a while since I finished one because I have a bad habit of working on multiple things at once and then I only get so far into it and it's just... You know, it's not it's not great, but uh, yes, at the moment, m my last like full novel I wrote was part of, was supposed to be part of this wider universe where it'd be like a bunch of different stuff which you can read on their own, but they all take place in the same world because I I spent a really long time crafting the setting and I was like, well, I want to use it, so there's that. Um, but I haven't worked on that in a little while, and so at the moment I'm kind of jumping between three different projects. There's an alternate history timeline that I'm working on, which I'll probably post uh, online eventually whenever I get around to finishing it. Uh, and then there is something called Beggar Knight that I've been working on, and that's, like I was saying, low magic fantasy. It's just about this kid that scams his way into training to become a knight and then runs into trouble along the way. And then uh, the third one, I actually don't have a title for it because I'm not great at coming up with titles, but it's basically about witches, like what if witches were real and lived in our modern world, but everyone knew about it, you know, they weren't like a secret or anything, They, so they had, you know, laws around what witches have to do and uh, laws to protect people and all that, but then it becomes like a civil rights issue and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a vague concept because it's still pretty early on, but you know, I, I do have fun working on that one. Uh, and, yeah, I have a couple of other projects that I either have set aside for now, or I just don't work on all that often, because, I don't know, my brain just doesn't like to focus on things for long periods of time, and that's probably a bad habit that I'm trying to get out of, but, you know, it is what it is. Which is your favorite accidentally funny book? Uh, that is Elixir, the Elixir trilogy, which I've, you know, I did a whole video on that before, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. And while that is definitely my most hated book series, it's still really funny at times. What part of the video making process do you enjoy the most? Uh, I enjoy scripting the most because, you know, I just like having all these ideas, getting them out, and then sort of once they're on the page I can iron them out a little bit, smooth out the wrinkles, and sometimes I'll even surprise myself by the conclusions I come to, uh, or I'll change my own mind just by thinking about things more, and it's a lot of fun. My least favorite part of video making is the editing. I just I really don't like editing at all. It's, I don't know, just sitting there for hours at a time, cutting up clips and watching the same bits over and over again. Like, sometimes while I'm editing, I can get, like, a funny joke or something in there, which is, you know, that's fun. I enjoy doing that, but for the most part, it's just a slog. And, uh, you know, that's not to say I don't like being in front of the camera either, because I do like that as well. I just like that less than scripting. So, yeah, those are the three big things. Do you play D&D? &D? If so, do you like to DM or play? What's your favorite race and class to play? Yes, I do play D&D, &D, and that's the main RPG that I've played. I've played a couple others, like I've played Shadowrun, I've played Pathfinder, but mostly I've played D&D &D with my friends. And, um, I mostly like to play. I've been trying to get more into DMing lately, but, uh, just, you know how it is, our group already has one, and he's happy doing it, and uh, sometimes it just takes a lot of energy to DM stuff, or and a lot of time to DM stuff, which I just don't have, so it, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, what's your favorite race and class to play? I don't really have a favorite class. My favorite race is definitely human, because you can use them for pretty much anything you want. Um, especially variant humans, because then you get an extra feat at character creation. Um, but favorite class, I don't really have one, especially because there's a couple I still haven't played a campaign as. Uh, but if I really had to choose one right now, like, gun to my head, I would say Cleric, and that's mostly because, just like human, you can choose to do pretty much anything you want with Cleric, and so I just enjoy that. What are the books you dislike that everyone loves, and the books you love that everyone hates? Uh, the books that I hate, just hate, 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 that everyone else seems to like is The Lovely Bones, and I've talked about that enough, I talked about it in my Most Hated Books video way long ago, and just watch that, because I'm not getting into it, but everyone seems to like The Lovely Bones and say it's, like, deep and has all this meaning. It It's not, and it doesn't, and I hate it. 
Uh, a book that I love that everyone seems to dislike is An Ember in the Ashes, like that whole trilogy, or not trilogy, that whole series so far. Like, it, it seems that the people who are really focused on YA think it's fine most of the time, and uh, the people that aren't don't like it, which, honestly, I just, I, I try to wrap my mind around that. I don't quite get it. I just really like those books. What made you criticize people's world building? So, that is a little bit more of a difficult question to answer than you might think. So, basically, when I first started my channel, and for almost two years I got, like, no attention for it, and I was just doing it for, for fun, uh, I was pretty much only doing reviews of stuff. I very rarely branched out, and in my head I was constantly thinking about, like, okay, well, what if I try doing, like, some video essay type stuff, like talking about the themes of this and exploring different uh, ideas and such, which is, you know, a lot more of what I do now. And I was just thinking about that sort of thing, and one day I was, like, th reading uh, An Ember in the Ashes, or rather I was reading A Torch Against the Night, which is the second book, and it was just kind of bothering me how... Uh, what's her name? Helena? Helene? Oh, shit, I forgot. Uh, well, you know, I'll put her name up here. But she just mentioned how there were six million marshals in the Empire, and that just seemed really small, considering that it's supposed to be a big continent-spanning Empire. And so I just thought about it, I ran some numbers, I looked in the books for details, and yeah, it seemed weird. So then I just wound up writing down the whole script about the world building for that, and put it out, and at first it didn't get much attention, but I had a lot of fun doing it, so I made a couple others, and then those got big, and here I am. So basically, why do I criticize people's world building? Uh, it's just something I thought about one day and started doing. What are the best books to read to get into fantasy? So I personally would recommend some fantasy that's easier to get into to start off with. Like I wouldn't recommend you start off with something like the Stormlight Archive because that's just really dense and has a lot of information, has a very steep learning curve for the world and such. And I also wouldn't recommend the stuff that's a little bit more meta and a little bit more uh, subversive of the whole fantasy genre, so I wouldn't really recommend Mistborn, I wouldn't really recommend Wheel of Time for that. I would recommend just like some traditional fantasy that's easier to get into. And I don't particularly like the Lord of the Rings books, so I would say Green Rider is a pretty good one for normal, uh, if you're just trying to get into beginner fantasy stuff. And by the way, I have read that book before, and I am rereading it now, I'm gonna review it soon, so don't worry. Uh, Harry Potter is also a good one. Although that's like a specific subset of fantasy, and I'm pretty sure most of you have read it anyways, but nonetheless, it's a good entry point, I think. And Aragon, because Aragon is... doesn't do a whole lot original, doesn't do a whole lot new, but it does it very well, I feel. And so... and, you know, it is written for younger audiences, so it's much easier to read, there's not really anything that's, like, inappropriate or anything in there, so... I think those three are good, uh, starters to get into fantasy, and then you can get into, uh, more advanced stuff and more subversive stuff. If you were a god, what would you be the god of? I would be the god of atheism. What is a book you used to love and now hate slash the other way around? You know, I'm gonna have to put the Obama-Biden mysteries on there, because those two books, man, they were really, really fun reading them. And th this was kind of an issue when I read the second one, but basically, when they first came out, Joe Biden was kind of just a retired politician. Like, he was just a guy who used to be the vice president and kind of said and did some weird shit, but now he's like actually, excuse me, he's actually running for president, and there's a very real chance that he might be president a year from now, and so I can't really just look at him as, oh, this funny uncle dude anymore, like I have to look at him critically and just think, well, I like that, but I don't like that, I'm not a big fan of that, so just looking back, I can't really get into them anymore, even though they are pretty funny. What is your favorite kind of genre fiction, most hated kind of genre fiction, and what kinds of genre fiction will you never touch? So I'll answer that last one first. Never touch? I don't think there's any genre that I would never ever touch, because I've read a lot in my life, and I've read stuff from different genres, and obviously there's some that I prefer over others, but, you know, I've read mysteries before, I've read the occasional thriller, I've read romance and stuff, like, there's nothing out there that I would never touch. Uh, but as for what my favorite kind is, I had to think really hard about this. I guess at the moment it would be heroic slash epic fantasy, and I know that those are different things, but there's enough overlap between them that 
for this instance, I'm going to consider them the same. So heroic slash epic fantasy for the time being. However, I do go through periods where I will read a whole bunch of one type and then move on to a different type and read a whole bunch of that. Like, basically ever since this channel started getting big, I've been reading a whole lot of fantasy stuff, and that might give off the impression that that's mostly what I've been reading before. Like, no, before that, I read a whole bunch of young adult stuff, and before that, I read a whole bunch of uh, science fiction and space opera stuff. So, y you know, it's just... It, it is what it is. I uh, will probably be moving away from fantasy in the near future, but who knows? And uh, as for my most hated kind of genre fiction, hate is a strong word, but romance, I'm just, I'm not a big fan of it, because I think it works great as a subplot sometimes, and I think it can work decently well in realistic fiction, like if it's just a smaller part of a bigger story about these people's lives, it can work fine, but when it's like the kind of paperback, uh, dime store books that you find, like that your aunt likes, likes to read a lot, and it has the dude with the ripped shirt on the cover carrying a woman in his arms, like, that kind is just dumb. And I get that it's supposed to just be wish fulfillment and stuff, but it's not wish fulfillment for me, and so it just comes across as being stupid most of the time. What trends do you think will become more popular in fantasy in the new decade? So, for the past, um, maybe 20 years, we've really seen fantasy go in a very dark direction. And that's not to say that nothing that's more traditional and less dark hasn't come out, because plenty of it has. It's just that all the big stuff is focused on being very, very dark. Or most of the big stuff, I should say, is focused on being very, very dark. So I think that once people start to get tired of that, which they might be doing now, I think we're going to start swinging back in the lighthearted direction, because people are going to be just getting kind of tired of all the constant violence and rape and oh everyone's a bad guy and it's hard to like anybody and we m I, I don't know if we're going to be getting back to just like traditional fantasy stories which I kind of hope we don't but I think we will be getting into more light-hearted fantasy stories. Do you like non-fiction books? If so, what types? Uh, history, mostly. Like, I don't read a whole lot of that um, but whenever I do it's pretty much just history stuff. Are there any other art forms you are interested in, other than books? Oh yeah, totally. Like, I am a huge gamer, I play video games a lot, I just don't talk about it that much online, because, quite frankly, the gaming community is cancer, and I just can't stand them. Uh, but yeah, th as an art form, they're very interesting, because, you know, you're actually interacting with things, and it's much more immersive than most other types, so... And while I do think it's in a bit of a rut nowadays, because well, at the end of the day, it's about making money. I do still think that there's good stuff out there being made. There's still... I still have a lot of fun playing various things, and just, yeah, I, I like it as an art form. Uh, and then film, I was a huge film buff a couple of years ago. Not so much anymore now, but, like, I used to be super into uh, examining all the minutia of different things, and I don't do that as much now. I still am a movie fan. I still go out and see them plenty. And th this applies to television as well, just because, you know, film, TV, whatever. Point is, I like both of those, and I have thought about making short films and stuff before, but I've always gotten lazy and just stopped, because at the end of the day, I just don't have the same passion for that as I do for reading and writing. Uh, and then anime as well. I'm, I I'm not as big a fan of that as I used to be. Uh, you might be noticing a pattern here, but uh, yeah, I've, got, I've been part of different fan bases over my life, and books are pretty much the only one that I've stuck with forever. But yeah, I, I'm getting a little bit ba more back into that because I'm watching it with my friends and stuff, but just, yeah, those are the big three ones, and obviously I've occasionally gotten into other stuff, but those are all the things other than books that I have been interested in and been a part of the fan base for at least a while. Have you ever read light novels? If you haven't, are you planning to start reading one anytime soon? I have read a couple of light novels before. I'm not a big fan of them, honestly. Like, I just... They, they'll have some really neat ideas in there, but they're written in a very strange manner, which I just don't like. And, uh... I mean, I like the artwork, at least. There's that. And, um... A lot of them are just wish fulfillment for teenage boys, which gets old quick when you... 
once you're no longer a teenage boy. And honestly, I was starting to get tired of it even when I was a teenage boy, so like, just, yeah, at the end of the day, and I know there are light novels that aren't like that, I get it, but a lot of them are, and I just don't have the patience to sift through that much and try and look for something that's better, especially because even if it is better, it'll still have all the other issues that I dislike about the art form, so just, yeah, not a big fan of them. What are your thoughts on the sequel trilogy and or Star Wars Legends? I think that the sequel trilogy is really, really good up until Rise of Skywalker, and even then, Rise of Skywalker isn't the worst thing ever. Like, the story-wise, it's kind of a mess, and it tries to retcon stuff from the previous movie. But, you know, at the end of the day, film is about more than just the storyline. It's also about the acting. It's about the cinematography. It's about the action scenes and the fight choreography. And all, all that's also important to the enjoyment of it. And I think most of that is pretty good. It's just the storyline that is terrible, so... Yeah, so it's good until Rise of Skywalker, and even then Rise of Skywalker isn't the worst. Uh, as for the Legends, I haven't read all of them because there's just so much out there, but I like a lot of it. <laughs> Not all of it, but, you know, it, it gets pretty dumb sometimes, and it feels more like fan fiction that was written by well, not professionals, than stuff that was written by professionals, but, you know, I've, I've seen worse. What is the best movie adaptation of a book, in your opinion? So, I had to think about this one for a while, actually, because I was thinking, like, well, there are some movies that do a very good job of getting the story out there, but the story that's in the book isn't that great, and then there's others where they actually change things, but they make it better. Like, I did a whole video on Beautiful Creatures a little while ago that was basically talking about that. But after thinking about it for a while, I decided uh, The Maze Runner is the best movie adaptation, like, the whole series. Because, granted, the storyline and the setting of those books isn't great to begin with, and the movie makes them make even less sense, but it takes a bunch of characters which, for the most part, just didn't have that much personality and weren't that good, and it makes them very good. It gives some very good actors to play them, and it has some extremely great action scenes as well. And so, while the movies still have their issues as well, I think that they took a book series which is solid, but not really all that memorable, and turn them into something that is just really, really enjoyable to watch, even if, again, it's not that great. Of the books you've read, which one deserves to be made into a show slash movie? So this one's cheating a little bit, but uh, the Berserk manga deserves to be made into a proper anime, because they've tried to do it, like, four fucking times now, it's always been bad, that it deserves a proper anime adaptation. And that's all for today, so I just want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks a whole bunch for getting me to 50,000. That's still weird to think about. <laughs> like, if I told myself five years ago that this would be happening, I wouldn't have believed it, but, you know, here, here we are. It's, uh, it's great, and I'm happy to be here, and thanks for watching. Please like and comment and subscribe, and thanks to all my patrons, but thanks especially to my $10 and up patrons, Apo Savalainen, Brother Santodes, it's Santodes, I've been saying Santodes for a while, sorry about that, uh, Christopher Hawkins, Christopher Quentin, he's a new guy, and Joseph Pendergraft, and of course Tobacco Crow. You guys are pretty great, and if you are not a patron, consider giving me money and getting your name put up here. And if you don't have money, then like I said, just like and subscribe and all that. See you later. Bye.